More than anything else, God wants a happy, life-giving relationship with you and for you. And the prevailing life that God wants you to enjoy requires a, a changed value system. We're going to talk about that this morning. Today we're continuing our look at the greatest talk that was ever given. And, and more than anything else in this talk, Jesus talked about relationships. He talked about our relationship with God. He talked about our relationship with each other. He talked about even our relationship with money and possessions and things like that. And, and the basic summary of his message is God wants a happy, life-giving relationship with you and for you. Okay, He wants you to pass on, too, the blessings that flow out of that relationship relationship and pass it on to the, your relationships with other people. And this prevailing life that God calls us to and, and offers to us requires one thing of us. It requires a changed value system. And, and uh, um, we're going to look today at a, at a section of it that has to do with a thing that all of us deal with. He applies it to this very specifically, this area of worry. Chronic worry will rob you of this life that God wants for you. And to set the context, Jesus says this. He talks about these things in, in Matthew chapter 6 that's recorded, starting in verse 19. He talks about our earthly possessions and that type of thing. He said, don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But instead, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin can't touch it, okay, and, and, and destroy it, and where thieves can't get, get their hands on it. And for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He says your earthly treasures are only temporary, okay? Don't, they don't really satisfy your deepest needs, and they're always going to leave you wanting. So live for something that's eternal. Change your value systems. And then he says the eye is the lamp of the body. The eye is, if your eyes are healthy, your whole body is full of light. If, if your eyes are doing their job, they're letting the light in, and it fills you with light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, he says, boy, this darkness will be all that will be inside of you. And, and so he says you have to have spiritual perception. And, and if that light that comes inside of you is actually darkness, and you're perceiving it as being the right way, as being the truth, wow, what kind of darkness are you living in then? You have to change your value system. And then he reminds us, he says, you know what? You can't serve two masters, okay? You're going to have to make a choice in this life. Either you're going to hate one and love the other. If you try to do that, you're going to be devoted to one and you're going to despise the other. And then he applies it very specifically. He, said, he says, you can't live for both money and God. You've got to make a choice about what the highest value in your life is going to be. What he's saying is the kingdom of God demands an unswerving allegiance to its values. Anything else is, is not going to serve you well. And it leads him to this conclusion. He says, therefore, okay, therefore, because of all these things I just said, don't worry about your everyday life. Let it go, guys. Let it go. Whether you're going to have enough food or, or drink or clothes or something like that, after all, he says, you're better than that. You're higher than that. Your life doesn't just consist of just food and clothing and those basic things like that. A while back, I was driving through Las Vegas on I-15, and, 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 and the billboards in Las Vegas are pretty interesting. Okay, Most of them, if you, if you look at them, most of them are for things like divorce attorneys, they're advertising casinos, they're advertising buffets, they're advertising plastic surgeons, okay, and nudie shows. That's what Vegas is all about, I guess, you know. And, and Jesus says you're more than all those types of things. Really? Divorce attorneys? He says, you know what? Your relationships gone sour are not what you should live for. Live for life-giving, healthy relationships. He says the casinos, you're much more than how much money you have. 
Don't worry about it, he says. Buffets, where's your next meal coming from? Don't worry about it. You know, plastic surgeons, how you fill out your clothes or don't fill out your clothes or whatever. You know, he says, live, you're more than that. And the nudie shows, really? You're more than just your appetites, everybody. You know, and, and he, says, he, says, he says, you're more than anything that this material world can offer you. Your identity is much higher than that. But the truth is, those billboards in Vegas tap into our fears, don't they? They tap into what we, we're, we get afraid about. You know, how much money are we going to have? Where's our next meal coming from sometimes? How are we going to fill out our clothes, you know, our appearance and that type of thing? And what, how are we going to satisfy and fulfill our physical appetites? But Jesus says, see yourself differently than that. Grab onto his higher values, okay? You are someone that God cares for more than you know. Why do you worry about all that kind of stuff? Jesus' point is this. Life is more than those things. What he's saying is God is active in this world and he cares about you so much that you don't really need to worry about these basic necessities of life. Live for values that are higher than that. Now, Jesus had this, started this whole discussion about, about money and possessions by talking about the accumulation of wealth, you know, excess and, 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 and how much abundance you have. And then what he does is he moves to this discussion about the necessities of life, like things like water and food and clothing and that type of thing. And Jesus draws from everyday life to make his point, okay? And he says, here's how you can know you don't have to worry about these things. He gives examples from everyday life to try to, to try to convince us to live for these higher values and not worry about all these details. So starting in chapter 6 of Matthew, verse 25, where he says, don't worry about it. Don't worry about all the details of your life. Then he says this, regarding life and, you know, life and food. He says, look at the birds, man. Look at how they just flit around and that type of thing. They don't need to plant or harvest or put food in barns and that type of thing because your heavenly Father feeds them. He gives them what they need. And then he says this, aren't you far more valuable than they are? Understand where you are kind of in this pecking order of life, okay? And can all your worries, he says anyway, add a single moment to your life does it work, he says? It doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. It doesn't work anyway. When it comes to your body and clothes and your, your physical appearance, he says, why worry about all that kind of stuff? Why worry about your clothes? Look at the lilies. Look at the flowers out in the fields. And, and they don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, who was quite the dresser, King Solomon, in all of his glory, wasn't, quite, wasn't dressed as beautifully as these fields and the way God makes them look after the, after the winter rains. And, and if God cares so wonderfully for the flowers that are here today and they're gone tomorrow, won't he care for you? Have some faith, man. Trust him for these types of things. And be different, then he says. And, and in verse 31, he says, let your faith inform your face. Okay, he says, don't worry about having enough food or drink or clothing. Why are you walking around worried about all this stuff? Why be like unbelievers? Where's your faith, man? And, and why you, unbelievers are, get deeply concerned about these things. But he says, your heavenly Father knows, already knows what you need, that you need these things. And he will give you what you need from day to day if you live for him. And make his values, make his kingdom values, make the, your destiny in the kingdom of God your driving primary concern in life. Let that be your guiding principle in life. And then it's really cool because he ends with this non-theological reason, just kind of this practical advice. He says, don't worry about tomorrow. Oh, my word. Tomorrow, when tomorrow comes, it's going to bring enough worries of its own. Okay, just, just today's trouble is enough for today. Just worry about what's going on today. You know, basically, think about your life today. Don't, don't project it out and stuff and borrow from, from tomorrow. What Jesus is angling for here is a better way of viewing life, viewing the world. He's saying, look at the little details of life. Look at the little details of things that are so easy to miss right around you and allow these observations to, to inform, I'm going to throw out a big word, your cosmology. 
okay? Cosmology is the study of the whole universe, okay? It's, it's, it's the way you look at all of life. He's saying, how are you viewing this one and only life that you, that you give on this spinning planet, in this place that, that God has given you and spun up and, and this gift that he's given you? You see, a lot of people see the world and their, and their cosmology, the way they look at life, as if it's some kind of closed system, okay? That we're all on our own inside of this thing, and, 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 and nothing can get in from the outside, okay, and penetrate it. But what Jesus is advocating is a different perspective, more of an open system, okay? An open universe that God can penetrate, that he can influence, that, that he, he cares about what's inside of it, and he can come in and deal with things. Jesus is advocating a perspective that says, while it's true that there are normal patterns, there are physical laws that govern and regulate our physical world and space that we live in, right? There's also, he says, someone who permeates and also can supersede the physical laws that, that, that are the norm of our, of, our, of our existence. That God has existence outside of these things because he is not a thing, but he is a spiritual person, which means he has intellect, emotion, and will and the ability to influence, okay? And God transcends all things, okay? And he's able to suspend or manipulate the physical me mechanisms of the world to accomplish his purposes. And that is to accomplish what you need in your life and what we all need in this life. And God is willing. He can not only do it, but he is willing to do it. He is willing to suspend and manipulate the physical mechanisms of the physical universe sometimes to meet your needs, even your basic needs of clothing, shelter, food, and water. The idea is, is this, that worry kind of goes away, okay, if we make sure our ultimate reliance is placed on this transcendent one, this one who is above it all and who can penetrate it so that we can have even our basic needs of clothing, food, and shelter, and water met. Ultimately, he's saying, there's no worries if you lean on this transcendent one, okay? Now, to make sure that we understand Jesus' teachings here and about worry, I want to kind of predict maybe some basic different kinds of reactions that, that some of you are, are feeling right now as, as, I've, as, I've, as I've kind of walked through some of Jesus' teaching here. The first reaction would be this. It would be from those who are kind of, you know, happy-go-lucky, you know, cheerful by nature, okay? And in some cases, irresponsible maybe. You know, they're, they're just naturally, uh, you know, by temperament, you know, kind of easygoing. They don't worry about anything, you know, type of thing. They just kind of cruise through life, taking every day as it comes and that type of thing. Now, this kind of person could hear these words and too easily say, yeah, you know, I knew other people were way too uptight, you know, and why do they get so, so concerned about things like grades in school or something like that or working too hard at work, you know? They should just kind of chill, you know, or, you know, why, why are they too concerned about keeping their commitments and that type of thing? And, you know, I, I'm just going to live this out. I'm going to mooch off others and just kind of have the no worries kind of lifestyle, right? I'm just going to be happy and go, go lucky, happy, go lucky and free, you know, carefully choosing. By doing that, God's instructions here not to worry, to live that no worries lifestyle. So that's the first person. There's a second kind of person out there who's kind of the opposite. They're the hyper-responsible ones, right? Maybe that's you. They fret over every problem. You know, the economy weighs on their minds. And every piece of bad news, both near kind of personal or out there kind of societal, causes a fresh bout of anxiety and worry and, oh, no, you know, and they feel quite rebuked by Jesus' teaching here, you know. And, and ironically, you know, the spiritually sensitive ones, you know, would start to worry about their tendency to worry. In other words, they worry about worry, okay? And, and, and they hear something like this, and they, they say, oh, I know Jesus tells me not to worry, and I shouldn't worry so much, and now I feel bad, you know, about worrying a lot. And then, and then what they do is they go away, and they, they try really hard not to worry. Well, you know, you, you don't stop worrying by trying really hard not to worry, okay? That just doesn't work, okay? Then there's a third category of person, you know, and those are the ones who are experiencing in, in, a, in spades the messed up conditions that exist 
in our world and, and, and the ways in which those other two groups are not experiencing them, and at least in this, in this season they're in. That in spite of every effort to make a change to their situation, maybe they're chronically you know, unemployed or, 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 you know, or facing losing everything, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and they would hear this message and they'd say, you know, what do you know? I mean, really, what do you know? Life isn't that simple. I just wish it were. Or another guy could reflect on, on, on what was said and, 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 um, and he'd say, yeah, yeah. My life was storybook, okay? And then came the diagnosis. And, and now my little kids are watching my wife, watching their mom die this disgusting death. And, and, and you tell me I'm not supposed to worry, huh? You know, what do you know? You see, we have to be really careful how we uh, apply Jesus' teaching here and, and, and not turn it into something that it's not, okay? It's not an excuse to be irresponsible. It's not an excuse to, 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 or it's not meant to lay a guilt trip on anyone. And, and it's not meant to minimize the fear and pain associated with the legitimately worrisome and cruddy side of life. But here's what it is. Jesus is advocating an open universe, okay? Um, he's offering a different point of view, a way of seeing what goes on in your life and, and a glimpse of the God who is there. The God who is not silent. The God who wants to get involved in your life. And it's the God that Peter described, the Apostle Peter later in his life described as the one upon whom you can cast all your anxieties. Because you know what? He cares for you. He really does. So you can turn to him. You can toss him up to him. Okay? So Jesus is talking to this group of people, this large group of people, uh, in, the, in this message that we call the Sermon on the Mount. And he says, don't worry about your life. Trust in God. Don't, don't worry about anything. And, 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 and do you think, now think, let's go back in history. Do you think that you know, living conditions for them were easier or more difficult than they are for us moderns today? Well, the answer to that question is, Life was harder back then. It was much more difficult. And, and most of them were incredibly poor, and they had no prospects of changing that situation. And, and they would be poor till they died, okay? And, and probably something like 95% of them couldn't read or write. And, and man, if you got sick or disabled, you know, there were no, you know, surgeons back then that could really fix stuff, you know, with your bones and your joints and that type of thing. And, and if you got sick, man, the, the medicines they had back then are nothing like we've got today. And if you had a, some kind of pandemic like we've been dealing with, yeah, the idea of a vaccine and all that, man, that's, 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 that's a, a thousand, thousands of years away, you know, and, 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 and you could, a, a plague could come in and wipe out a third of a city, you know, and, and, and a lot of them were slaves that would never be free, had no prospects of that. And, and if you were a baby in that crowd that Jesus was speaking to that day, the odds are that you wouldn't live past 30, okay? The, the, the good odds that you wouldn't make it past that. That was the world that they lived in. And, the, you know, and, and if you were going to do a chart of Jesus' day and, and kind of lay it all out there, I think you'd have to say that living conditions were, were rather low and therefore the opportunity for anxiety was really, really high. Now, fast forward 2,000 years to today, right? You know, have living conditions have gotten a lot better, right? They, they actually have, you know, and, and we're better educated, we're healthier, we live longer, we're better resourced, we're cleaner, we're, we're freer, okay? We're, by, by spades, by 20 times what these, these people dealt with back then. So isn't it great? Isn't it great that we live in a day, an age, where, when there's no worries, right? No worries at all. What, me worry? You know, why would I worry? You know, because and, and, uh, you know, things are so much better today. Aren't you glad that because things are so much better, anxiety has pretty much been wiped out as a condition in the world? Or has it, right? Not so much, right? What we live with today is we have high standard of living conditions, okay? Way higher than what they had back then. 
but we have, I would say, probably, venture a guess, probably higher levels of anxiety. Part of what Jesus is angling for in his teaching here is if you think more money, you know, better health, greater success will free you from worry, <laughs> you're in for a big surprise. That's just not how it works, okay? Don't buy the lie. Okay, you, you'll never get a worry-free life, okay, by engineering improved circumstances, you know, more wealth, better health, stuff like that. We, we, we can see that in our world today, right? We've proved the point that he's trying to make. The only way is to, to, to get this worry-free existence is to learn how to put your life in the hand of the Father, to trust him, just like the birds of the air trust him, to let it go. Live your life like this little bird, you know, and, and uh, have that kind of perspective. See this open universe kind of perspective. And that's what Jesus saw. That's what he saw, and that's what he advocated for. And, and, and let me get personal. Let me talk about this guy. You know, I affirm this. I believe this is true. Or I should say I want to believe it the way he did, to the extent that he really did. Now, I have to be honest, I don't believe it yet. Not in the way he did, but I want to. I want to learn how to live this life. But he did know how to live this life. And Jesus taught us this. He taught us, he taught us that every kind of loss, okay, um, even death itself was simply nothing to worry about because you're always in the hands of your Father when you trust him. Put yourself in his hands. And even when that moment comes, which it will for all of us, the death, when death comes, that death that we will all die, if we put our life in the, in the hands of the Father, that will be the ultimate no worries moment for all of us, okay? Jesus said, the one who believes, the one who trusts in me, okay, even though he physically dies, will continue to live and will not taste the death that's, that we would all fear, right? And, and in other words, if you trust me, ultimately, nothing is at risk, okay? The Apostle Paul believed this, and he, and he, put it th he taught this. He, he put it like this. He said, be anxious for nothing, okay? But in everything, instead of being anxious, okay, toss it up. Through prayer, okay? Let your requests be made known to God. Let Him know what you're anxious about. And, and, and then he says, he gives us this promise that the peace of God will form a sentry around your heart and protect and guard your heart. That the peace of God will guard your heart and those worrisome thoughts in your mind when you put yourself in Christ Jesus. The idea is, is that when worry comes to your mind, yeah, don't feel guilty about it, okay? Um, don't, don't think that your faith is somehow inadequate. Um, don't beat yourself up. Instead, get proactive with it. Pray. Toss it up to Him. Give it over to Him. Cast that anxiety on Him, okay? Toss it His way. Give it to Him. Say, this is yours, God. This is yours. Here you go. Please, unburden me from this. Please, you got this. So I want to say... I want you to just think for a second. What is your worry? What is the worry of the day? The worry du jour, right? What is your concern? What's gnawing at you? You know, what makes you afraid when you think about it? Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's something going on with your kids. Maybe you're afraid of death. You know, maybe you're afraid of financial loss or maybe your job situation. Whatever. Maybe it's another person, right? You know, and... And I want to encourage you, take some time today. Take some time. And, and maybe, may, I don't know, maybe write it down on something, on a piece of paper or on a card or something like that and as a simple way to express it. To, the act of writing it down is actually a way of, of praying and, saying, and defining and, 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 and categorizing what it is that really is getting to me. And then in a very deliberate, conscious way, say, God, I give this off to you. I toss it up to you. Tear it up. Tear it up. As an act of faith, I'm, I'm getting rid of this, Lord. I'm going to trust you with this. 
help me to persist in my trust and throw it away. Let's do that right now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can write it down, that we can cast our anxiety on you, that we can give it to God, that we live in this, this place where you want to intercede, you want to intervene in our lives. And, and Lord, we, 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 we want that too. Expand our idea. Expand our idea of who you are. Teach us how to cast our cares on you. Teach us to stop worrying about stuff. And instead, teach us how to toss it up to you. Lord, show us where our lines of responsibility are. Show us how to live this life in a right, God-honoring, responsible way for your sake, for our sake, and for the sake of those we love. For it's in your holy name, your gracious name that we pray. Amen. I hope you continue with us on our journey through the Sermon on the Mount. Hey, we meet on Sunday mornings on our Lake Wolford Road campus in Valley Center, California at 9.30 a.m. We'd love to see you in person. Bring the kids. We've got stuff for them to do, too. For those of you who have been supporting our ministry financially, we thank you so much for the gifts that you give us. And I hope if you haven't been supporting us that you'd consider doing so. You can see the information on the bottom of the screen on how you can do that. God bless you, and I hope you have a great week.